Shalom, 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 Buana Sifiwe. I hope you are well kept and uh, you're continuing to be so wonderful and so <laughs> loving Jesus Christ. Karibu sana katika Caesar Christ Zion Assembly. We are introducing a new series we are calling Thorns to Thrive. And we are going through the story of David. Now today... We say that we will look at, you know, the anointing of King David all the way until the time he actually becomes and is crowned king of Israel. So today, I want us to look at before the anointing, what is David doing? Because most of us want to get into the anointing, want to follow this anointing, and we know that we know that we know that we are anointed for service. However, before, before being commissioned, what is David doing? Okay, so 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16, um, this is the time when God leads Samuel down to uh, the house of Jesse to actually anoint David. Now, we will reach up to the place when uh, actually David is anointed, but I want you to be very careful what, you know, uh, David is doing. Before he's anointed. Okay? So, now the Lord said to Samuel, huh? You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lived there. For I have selected one of his sons to be my king. Eh? Then, but Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong? they asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or by his height. But wherefore? For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see the things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shimea. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of this. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he is out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Underline that. He is out watching the sheep and the goats. Send him for at once. Samuel said, we will not sit down until to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. Now look at that. Look at that incident. David is out busy in his father's uh, <laughs> sheep pen, taking care of sheep and taking care of goats. Way in the pasture land, helping in his parents with the chores at home. Helping where a helping hand is supposed to actually uh, it's required. And before David, I, I rather even put to you that David was not even interested in being a king of Israel. He was simply living his life, obeying his parents, 
helping his parents and being as useful as he would in the homestead. So you, before you are called, are you so busy <laughs> looking for the calling or are you being useful in the area and in the space that God has placed you? God placed David in the, in the shepherd's place of Jesse's family for a reason and for a purpose. Later on in the book of Psalms, he says that the Lord trained him to shepherd the sheep. This did he know that he would then shepherd the nation of Israel. Shepherding sheep and goats looked like something so silly, something that is not even associated with kingship of Israel. And yet God, in the training that he was training, training David, remember that even before this, God had already told Samuel, I am looking for a man, and I have found a man who I will anoint as king, a man whose heart is after my own heart. Where is this man? This man is not in the palace. This man is not even one of the soldiers. This man is not even, um, you know, a, an official in the king's court. He is not a brother to Saul. He's not even the son to Saul. He is out there in Bethlehem, a very small village in Israel looking after sheep and goats. What are you doing before you actually enter into your calling? Later on, David will tell Goliath and will tell the nation of Israel, the same God who um, you know, rescued me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear while I was watching over my father's sheep and goats will rescue me from you. God trains where you are at. So are you being useful or are you waiting for uh, a voice from heaven to say, uh, like for example, who? John, John, I am the Lord God Almighty. Now I have called you to become a prophet. Hello. God has placed you where you are so that he trains you in that same environment that he has positioned you for your destiny, for your calling. For that reason and that purpose why he created you for. So start being useful wherever you are. Is it in church? Start being useful. Be an usher. Be, join the praise and worship team. Join the media team. Join the, the catering team. Wherever. Join the Sunday school. Wherever. Is it at home? Be a good daughter. Be a good son. Is it at school? Be a good student. Be a student that every person can look at and say, that one fears the Lord. Is it in the employment sector? Be a good employee. Be a good worker. Because there, God is training you to step into your destiny. Do not for once think that wherever you are, you cannot be faithful. And then God will give you something bigger. And then you'll start being faithful. No. Start where you are and not be fixated so much in the destiny. Be fixated so much in being useful in the environment that God has positioned you to be. God bless you. See you next time. This is Christ Zion Assembly.